Hey YouTubers, have you ever wanted to reduce your rucksack down to below eight kilos for something like a week's walking trip? Well, join me in this video as I empty my rucksack out following the 120 miles coast to coast walk along the Two Moors Way. In May 2017, I walked the Two Moors Way, which is a 120 mile national route across a beautiful part of Devon from Wembury in the south to Lynmouth in the north. I approached it as a lightweight backpacking trip, so my rucksack weighed less than 8 kilos and I was using a tarp and bivvy as my main sleeping equipment. So this video was the day I returned and emptied all my rucksack out and went through all of the items saying what worked and what didn't. So check this out and if you want to know more about the walk the other video shows all the details of the trip itself and there's even an eight part audio podcast series available on the outdoorstation.co.uk which gives you even more atmosphere. So enjoy. Well, I've literally just got off the train from Barnstable after my walk from Wembury to Lynmouth. And before everything gets taken out of the rucksack and thrown into the wash or distributed back into the various boxes it came from, I thought I'd go have a quick run through of the items and any comments that I might have from, from use. Uh, so obviously we had the uh, Silverback, the new pack from um, Gossamer Gear. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, perhaps slightly heavier than I'd like it to be. Um, I did a couple of modifications to it uh, to make it more useful to me. Uh, I took the, the lid off, which was here, and uh, put some shock cord, zigzag some shock cord to enable it to be closed better. Uh, and then the strap that holds on the lid I changed, there. there's two males normally, a male there and a male there. I changed the male for a female and uh, that enabled me to then use it as a compression. But to be honest, really, uh, it's not that well thought out as the top of the pack here should be a roll top compression like that. And all it needed was a couple of female clips and you could clip that down and clip that down and pull the pack down neatly so um, I find that a bit odd. The other thing is the attachment points where the brain is uh, is obviously I've just tied them out of the way here uh, these two things and as you're walking they're just flapping all the time and just banging you on the back of the head um, so I really don't understand the logic of, of uh, what they've done there so I think a little bit of uh, a few improvements to the pack and it would be a reasonable pack. Um, so let's just empty out the pockets and do things uh, externally first. Okay so in the large outside pocket which has been very useful what have I had? Well obviously I've had my buff and cap uh, on on a continual basis um, just randomly pulling things out. This is the, the Montane Spine smock which was absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Not very heavy at all. Uh, it's got a tiny pocket there which is about big enough for a phone and, and that's about it. Uh, but what you have got inside, um, I'll turn it inside out, you've got a couple of quite sweet chest pockets here uh, uh, which are I did presumably designed for gels or that sort of thing. I mean obviously with a name like the spine I presume it's associated with the Pennine Way race the spine race uh, and to, to be honest absolutely perfect for it so fantastic smock um, it's become my favorite piece uh, there's a lot of montane stuff in all this just because that's always worked for me montane i think it's a great brand and uh, the products on the whole are bang on um, montane mitts over mitts very very small very very light um, Yep, I use those a few times. The great thing about them is that they literally weigh very little and pack down to nothing, so they were good. What else have I got in here? Uh, buff, of course. I had a couple of buffs. Where's the other one? It's around here somewhere. Uh, gaiters. These are the old Rab 
event gaiters. They don't make them anymore. Why not? They are the absolute best for anybody using trail shoes or perhaps ankle boots. Uh, these have been the business. They've lived a few years. You can see they've had a fairly tough life, but they're still going strong. And I've always found them fantastic. Just brilliant for stop, stopping crud and dust and muck getting into the ankles of your trail shoes. What else have we got in here? The spine, Montaigne again, spine trousers. Um, what can you say? Yes, they've taken now place of my um, old Berghaus Gore-Tex trousers, which I've always used. The only thing I would say about them in practice, when I use waterproof trousers, I always leave them unzipped so you can get into them quickly. Uh, it makes a big, big difference. However, one of the issues here is they have this Velcro strap, which is great for closing the uh, leg and keeping it uh, obviously closed when you're perhaps having it slightly ventilated and open. But the tendency is as you're putting your foot into the the trousers that will suddenly stick and your foot gets that far and then you start to stumble which could obviously end up being a bit of a rip so when you put these um, on always remember to keep pulling off that velcro tab what else have we got uh, pack cover just an old pack cover i tend to it's a belt and braces thing i tend to chuck it on just in case uh, it, to be honest most of the times it's not really needed um, a pair of uh, Outdoor Designs sticky gloves. I'd use those most of the days because it was chilly starts. Um, seal skin socks. I'm not a fan of seal skins because generally they stink when they're wet. Uh, however, having said that, uh, I was fortunate on this walk because the weather was fairly good on the whole and I didn't really need it. Where I would have used these wasn't so much wet grass in the morning but more going through really muddy uh, styles where cattle or sheep had been gathering and turned the gateway into a real gungy horrible muddy mess. So it'd be more of just a convenience thing but as luck would have it, weather was on my side, didn't have to do that. It's the gift that keeps on giving couple of odd bags which I stuff things in the good old toilet trowel you've got to have a toilet trowel and yes I did use it on several occasions uh, cheap plastic but very very sturdy and inside there I've also got some <clears throat> in a plastic bag uh, some hand gel a lighter and some paper so that was useful <clears throat> very useful and needed I'll put that sort that out later right on the outside pockets what do we have obviously i've put, packed them away but the trailblaze the mountain king carbon fire uh, carbon fiber sky runners trailblaze poles absolutely fantastic very very light much sturdier than i give them credit for and i obviously used them on several occasions to pitch the top so that was great too so that was excellent um, in the side pockets I'd normally keep my iPhone which had a uh, Root Buddy on uh, and when it went off the map because the Root Buddy map for South Devon, North Devon doesn't quite take in the whole route I used the OS, uh, OS app uh, which is absolutely brilliant uh, very very quick fires up and gives you GPS re reference um, sorry OS map reference and also a, a uh, compass as well which was quite useful because I had a physical map which I'll show you in a second uh, so I knew I had to be going in a certain direction but it was a great confirmation so that was that actually that app is really really good um, and the other side pocket this is I mean usually I'd have munchies and stuff like that in here but obviously I've eaten those I just had a little bottle of um, of uh, suntan lotion which actually was factor 50 and really really useful so that was excellent and of course I had the travel tap uh, water filter <coughs> travel tap water filter which I carried and used once uh, on the last day or the last day but one I think it was um, there was a lot of uh, open ground across Exmoor weather was getting warm I thought I was going to wild camp and need water so I stopped and took it from a stream and filtered it through this and put it into the platters that I had um, and uh, I didn't actually need it at the end of the day but it was useful to have it was reassuring it's one of those reassuring you've got it but I hope you don't need it jobs okay so let's disembowel the pack as I say the stuff has just come back so if it's dirty or filthy or 
smelly. <laughs> You'll know why. In fact, talking of which, yeah, the trail tights. Uh, the I've got the Embers Merino T-shirt, uh, which I say sadly Embers is closing, but um, the T-shirt's been really, really comfortable, perfect all all for the whole trip. Slightly smelling in the armpits, but that's me more than the T-shirt, and actually it doesn't really pong too much. Montane trail tights, absolutely brilliant, really, really good just right when it's warm they're not making you hot and sticky and when it's cool they're just enough warmth and so it enables you to keep moving without feeling um, like you're going to overheat if you exercise too much i'll come on to the trail shoes in a second probably very last there's a couple of things i want to say about the trail shoes so we have the generator the rab generator smock um yeah fantastic Wore it when it, obviously it was really chilly. Um, wore it to uprate the sleeping quilt uh, on the couple of nights when it got down and it was around the zero mark. Uh, but yeah, brilliant. This is my bag of uh, bits. So I've got spare glasses here. And then inside my bag, I've got one of these clever little foldable USB chargers with a twin socket on the back. And that's great because it keeps the prongs out of the way. Uh, the, obviously the various leads, some spare batteries, spare SD cards and a little USB charger for the camera. Uh, and that's, that was good. I've managed to reduce that down over the years to something that's much smaller and uh, convenient to pack. Obviously in a, in a bag for belt and braces. <clears throat> um, talking of which... We've got um, the Panasonic Lumix FT3, Panasonic Lumix FT3. I took all the pictures and all the video on that uh, with a little uh, UltraPod uh, as the main support. A great little combination. Obviously not the best pictures in the world, uh, the best video in the world, but it is one of these tough cameras uh, and I've used it in pouring rain and also I'm just not scared to use it and chuck it about to be honest. Um, so it's a compromise is not broadcast quality images but certainly plenty good enough images hopefully which you've seen already and then i was also carrying on my shoulder pouch my tascam uh, dr05 which is the mp3 recorder that i use for most of my podcasts these days and i had a little small plug-in tie mic which i plugged into this for the video sections to get better audio uh, so have a listen to the audio podcast see what you think of that <clears throat> Uh, what else we got in here? Uh, got the head torch, which was normally in one of my pockets, and then various clips and bits to hold everything together. In a plastic bag, the Two Moors Way book, uh, by, written by Sue Vickers, who I also interviewed uh, on the trip as well, on the audio podcast. So if you want to hear a bit more about that, do look that up. But uh, very useful book. But as luck would have it, I'd sort of normally start walking and then look afterwards what I sh should have really paid more attention to. Uh, this was my, what was in here? Oh, this was probably my wallet. Yeah, this was, yeah, just a, just a wallet, just a waterproof bag so that if I stopped anywhere and I needed to grab some money, I just used to grab that bag out of it and everything else was fine. I wasn't really worried about anything else. Small first aid kit. Um, that's one of the Ortlib small packs, very useful. We've got everything in there I needed. Um, as you can imagine, there isn't an awful lot in there, but just plasters basically, um, painkillers, and uh, probably a small compact bandage or two, just in case I had a more of a serious injury. My wash kit. Um, this was perhaps more elaborate than not. First of all, the two most vital things, uh, obviously that's two Nalgene pots, but Gerwell foot cream, foot cream and refreshing balm, um, which is available on the Backpacking Light website. I just squirted some of that into these. Foot cream in the morning, refreshing balm at night. When I had time to do that, it was absolutely brilliant. Really did refresh the feet and also prepare the feet for the trip. Just a small toothpaste, small toothbrush, um, some Wet ones, wet wipes, always useful for a quick freshen up to see if, make sure you're not smelling. Small bit of uh, the um, towel, the, the MSR um, 
micro towel which is in here but that's just a small one I just use that as a flannel so I just scoop that into a stream and give myself a quick wash and if you listen to the podcast that's the Avid Razor. The Avid Razor was fantastic and I think it's been discontinued because Gillette have um, put a cease and desist on them for whatever reason. Uh, presumably they've copied some sort of infringed some sort of copyright but what a brilliant backpacking hiking tool that was and it gives a really good shave too. So that was my wash kit, which was probably more elaborate than some people might take, but hey, I'd quite like to try and smell nice if I can. What else have we got? Right, that and that go together. So that is my entire shelter and sleeping system. So in there, I've got a backpacking like solo tarp. So that's the solo tarp and a dozen pegs and four cords. That is my bivy bag, which I made and it's also a Neo Air, full length Neo Airs in there. So uh, those two were my two items. So I kept near the top so I could quickly whip the shelter up and then shove the bivy bag down and crawl in and keep warm. So I was quite pleased with that. There's the MSR towel that was the full length towel which I didn't actually use at any stage. Uh, what else have we got? It was, this is a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, Montaigne prism trousers. Uh, again, combining it with the, the RAB generator smock. Uh, these are lovely little insulated trousers. And I've realized I've got a big piece of something unpleasant on there. Um, insulated trousers, which I, I tucked on at night when I felt it was going to be cold. So that combined with the generator smock worked well. Um, getting to the bottom of the bag now. This is my cook kit, which Maybe a little bit elaborate perhaps. It depends if you want to class it as ultra light or lightweight. So, um, a double layer to pop cozy using the uh, twin bubble system. Inside of which we've got an Evernew frying pan and main pot. Inside of which I've got the solo stove. So the solo stove is a wood burning stove. Uh, that sits inside here quite nicely. These are non-stick uh, pots. Uh, yes, I did cook on here several times. Um, well, a few times actually, thinking about it. Um, I did, um, when I stayed at the one farm, let me have some eggs. So I did cook some eggs. I was going to use this and take some eggs with me, but the weather didn't allow it. So that wasn't really needed. It was a bit more of a, a gimmick and a bit of fun, really. Um, had the weather been a little bit warmer, things might have been different. And then the rest of the cooking gear that goes with it, um, we've got all this, yeah. Folding spork, um, hammer o card for igniting the fire, little uh, silicon scoop, little whisk for scrambled eggs or exotic meals. Um, that was a, a tiny bottle of cooking oil, should I? Fancy myself as a bit of a cook. Um, flint and steel, and a couple of sort of little scrubbers, and oh yeah, a tiny bottle of uh, organic washing up liquid. So what I would do is have a cook the meal, and then boil water again with some of that washing up liquid inside it, and that would clean the pan out, which uh, has always been a really good system, and that works well. So let's put that away in there. Yeah, you know, if you want to be critical, yeah, that's heavy, that's bigger than I needed, but it depends what type of food you take with you, really. Uh, two one-litre platters, uh, used them a few times. Um, I think on the podcast you'll find that I actually carried too much water with me for too, too many times, uh, but um, obviously it's better to have them than not, but I used them definitely on that last night when I filtered watered into them. Uh, that's what remains of my food. So that's in a, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, Ziploc bags made by, made by, um, I've forgotten the name of the company now. But anyway, they do a range of these tough Ziploc bags, which is great. And that, there's about, well, there's plenty of tea and and milk in there, there's some smash, there's several meals. There's probably about three, three days worth of meals in there. So when that was full, 
it would be about twice as thick and that was about seven days worth of food. Um, this was my mug and rehydration pot. So uh, obviously just a standard MSR mug and that was for when I rehydrated my food, I'd put the plastic bag inside there, add water to it, and then that would start the food rehydrating during the day, and then I'd just need to heat it through at night. Um, again, it's sort of an optional extra, really. Uh, what have we got here? This is the Thermarest Alpine Quilt. Um, that's, it should have been the Chorus, but it didn't arrive in time, so that's in a compression sack and a roll top sack to keep that warm, to keep that warm, keep it dry. And finally, my bag of spare clothes, which consists of a Montane um, uh, Prima Loft shirt the name of which escapes me. Um, but anyway, it's the long sleeve zip neck one, which I wore when I wanted something clean uh, towards the end. Spare pair of briefs, dirty pair of socks. The only thing I didn't wear on the whole trip, shorts. I took them with me, but I didn't wear them. Uh, just never quite got warm enough. And then a possum hat which I think I got that from Embers Merino as well, actually. And that's so warm, it's really nice. But it's great when you're quilting to have a nice warm hat on your head. But I think I only actually used that once as well. Uh, what else? Finally, yeah, finally. The only comment I've got to make, finally, is the shoes, which were the Rockolite 280s. Uh, you can see around here I added, using free sole, I increased the rand just to protect that from falling apart. However, there's a nice hole started there and the same on the other side too, which is really annoying considering all I've done is walk 120 miles in these, not through the roughest terrain in the world, and I find that a bit disappointing. But this is the curse of, this is the curse of, in fact that's got some marks on it too, of Innovates unfortunately. They're brilliant shoes, they fit really well, they're great for trails, but unfortunately, they're not built as uh, well as they used to be. Okay, well, hope that wasn't too long and laborious for you, but that's basically everything as it's arrived back from the trip. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the videos and I hope you've enjoyed the podcast too. Thanks for watching.